but I'm not sure it's as fast as this turbo depth stack. I mean, frankly, seeing Jeff Bryden just lean back in the cut wearing his Pac-Man sweatshirt, I am already a fan. All right. I am clearly rooting for him. <laughs> By you go. That's a start from Blyden. We do see a force of will in Dylan's hand. So an, an advantage to Sneakin shows that they do get to play. They have something reactive in the yeah. deck. Jeffrey does have thought sees. So uh, that is one way that he can kind of force through his combo, so to speak. Um, and Dylan does have permission in terms of form of, you know, spell pierce and uh, uh, force and will. But uh, the thing is that Jeffrey's deck, you know, he could actually combo off without actually casting a spell. I mean, he effectively, it's just the Thespian stage and dark them. So um, pretty uh, interesting strategy there. But uh, Dylan's going to lead off with the ponder here, and he's got a lot of uh, interesting spells on that. He's got a force of will, spell pierce, and a ponder. So it looks like he's going to keep all three. And uh, the question is, does he want to draw the Force of Will? It looks like that is exactly what he wants to draw. All right, so he's going to go. So now he has no, Spell, no, spell pierce, pierce, Force right. of Will. He does play Lotus Petal for the turn, too. So that'll give him access to a Spell Pierce if he needs it. We'll go over to Blyde and see kind of what he has in store. There's, there's a fair amount of disruption on the other side of the board. So he has to be careful. Yeah, Dylan does have the combo. He's got Sneak Attack and Emrakul. So uh, he does have, you know, his, so to speak, combo. Um, but Dil Jeffrey... And it looks like he's going to go Bayou, Bayou, Lotus Petal, and then pass the turn. <laughs> oh, he wants no, to make he's... sure it resolves. Now he's going to tap two. The, the cool thing about Turbo Depths is that I can do a lot of its stuff ah. yeah, without counter, without fear of counter spell. Can't spell pierce that. <laughs> yeah, so Vampire Hex Mage. The thing about Dylan is he may... This, might, yeah. this may be his only chance to cast Force yeah, of Will. But, you know, the rest to... of the combo is a land. Yeah, because, again, he could crop rotate and, and just kill you that turn. All right, Hexmage is gone. It was forcible. The pitch was Spell Pierce, so that's all the permission that Dylan had. Uh, that was actually the only blue card that Dylan had, so that was the only thing he could pitch to Force of Will. Oh, wow, so there's another Force of Will, but he, like you said, he doesn't have a blue card right now, and he doesn't have any deck manipulation, so um, I think the other green. card on top of his deck was Ponder. Yeah, green light for Jeffrey right here, if yeah. he can pull off a combo. So let's see what he can do here. Excited about this. All right, we have four cards left in his hand. He's going to go with... Looks like Looks that's like a ghost, ghost quarter? quarter. Okay, yeah, so it is a ghost quarter. He does have one ghost quarter in his deck. He has a bunch of all in ways to push through Emmer to push through that merit lage. Okay, ghost quarter into the north. And now here, alright. Into the north is a rampant growth that instead of finding a basic land, it finds a snow land. Fortunately, Dark Depths is a snow land. Yeah, and we've actually seen this combo back when Dark Depths was a uh, a legacy deck, or I'm sorry, an extended deck rather. Um, you saw black green versions of Dark Depths, so uh, Basically, the only use for this card has really ever been to find Dark Depths. Very, very rarely is it a, a poor man's far seek. So here we go. We have Jeffrey. He's going to search out a Dark Depths. Again, if he has a, if he has a uh, crop rotation, he could find the Thespian stage at the end of Dylan's turn and make that Merit Lage token. However, Dylan, Dylan could just jam out a Sneak a tur Stack next turn. He's yeah. going to draw a Ponder. If he finds another Lotus Petal... He, well, he, we know, he'd have to draw all of we, we know the top card of his library is Ponder because he pondered turn one. I all believe right. it's Ponder. So I, my, so I, think, his, draw the I think his plan is to just draw the Ponder, um, sack the Lotus Petal, and get a, a sneak attack into play. He can't activate it, but he does have Force of Will with Ponder to pitch to it. So I think he's in good shape as long as he, yeah, as he does that. As long as he gets that blue card. Remember, Emrakul, in the battle, in the Clash of the Titans, Emrakul can beat up Merit Lage. Well, he can annihilate Merit Lage, but Merit Lage actually can, can beat up Emrakul if a fight ends up, if a fight somehow happens. Yeah, he, the question is whether or not Jeffrey's going to have enough permanence to sack to the Annihilator trigger to keep the 2020. I kind of like that idea. You know, it's this whole, like, Godzilla versus Mothra thing of, like, Emrakul swings into Merit Lage and just you know, these gigantic flying monsters. Yes. Probably the fight will never happen, but if it did, it would be very... I really like that. It'd well, there is happen. a Magic the Gathering movie happening, so right. submit all your ideas to Michael Bay. <laughs> All right, so we see a double crack of fetch lands there. It looks like Dylan was, this is, I believe he did not want to draw the ponder. No, he this did. Is, oh, he drew, he, this after is after the draw, the so right. we're just going to see a sneak attack come into play, and he's going to probably pass back with ponder to pitch the force of will, and he still has that emerald in his hand, so it's pretty good shape for Dylan. I mean, not too many cards he has to worry about here. Taps, you actually have to do more than just tap the lotus petal. But, yeah, uh, buddy. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Like, Hold on. What do you think you're doing there, buddy? You better sacrifice that to little fair, You have to tap and sacrifice <laughs> You have to it. tap and sacrifice, yeah. <laughs> so he has Force of Will plus Blue Card and Emrakul. He's got to be feeling pretty good right now. I find the people that, like, tap... There's a lot of people that do that with sack lands, too. They tap the sack land and then they sacrifice it. I find yeah. they're very polite in general. Yeah, <laughs> so no, no, no. It's very I'll polite it, of you. To, yeah. 
I just throw the thing. I don't even put it into play. I just throw it, put it straight into the graveyard and pick up my deck. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, interesting thing here, Jeff does have four copies of Tithing Needles in his deck. So if you can needle <laughs> sneak attack, that'd be pretty. Oh, I see Caracas. Caracas. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say he has one copy of Caracas. Caracas, uh, the problem with Caracas, though, is Dylan does have double red. So he can activate sneak attack put an Emrakul into play. Oh, if he's he allowed to attack, yeah. the Annihil trigger, trigger will happen. So if he just bounces Emrakul in response to the attack, Double red does he could get just bring it back Caracas. into play and then attack again. So. so this actually does not stop Emrakul from annihilating Jeffrey's board. It does, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not really going to stop the Emrakul play. Oh, man, he did have the second red source. Okay, so this is looking, looks like it should be a path to victory for Dylan Jones. You know, when you're playing against a deck like Jeffrey Blyden's deck, it's really a stressful play for someone like Dylan because you know his deck's up to something really unfair, but the scary thing is when it's not a known quantity in Legacy, you don't know what it is he's doing, but mm -hmm. whatever you know, whatever it is, if, if this guy's 5-0, you know it's dangerous, right? Yeah. So you're not really sure what you're playing around, and you're, what you do know is it's like he's going to kill you out of some, from somewhere. You yeah. Know? The good news is, though, your deck is so linear that um, you don't have to care that much about it. Uh, you can just you can just so hit I'm, him I'm with the yeah. Emrakul. Cool. My fifteen fifteen flying annihilator creature does not care about your cutesy cutesy deck. That's generally what the I strategy is. I still really want to see a board where Jeffrey blocks Emrakul cool with Merit Lage and just uh, yeah. kills it. I want to yeah, I want to see something <laughs> awesome happen. Yeah. How many times have you seen Emrakul? Cool not trade in combat. I've seen him like trade with a stink weed. How many times have you seen him just die to another creature? Oh, Something I've else. seen it. Yeah, I mean, in, in Legacy, you see it a lot just because beat, people like play stink weed imp. Uh, it also play, there's also uh, Baleful Strix, you know. But those are things that trade with it. How many times oh, do you see something just no. beat up Emrakul? There's nothing win. that beats up Emrakul. Nothing but Merit Lage. So Jeffrey is going to activate Caracas, the first activation, and then Dylan's just going to play it again. And yeah, uh, oh, it. unfortunately, it looks like Jeffrey did have. The, the, crop uh, the crop rotation, rotation and just he doesn't have enough time here. So we'll see if he has any other utility lands. He doesn't have a second Caracas, unfortunately, so he can't actually crop rotate his first one away to, to buy himself another turn. Yeah, he can find Thespian Stage. The thing is, is that the Annihilator trigger of six was actually too big of a number. It will get the Merit Lage. Yep. He, Jeffrey is at 20, so he, he'll, he'll only fi fall to five. Fortunately, like you said, he's going to lose six permanents here. And he only has six of them, so that will do it. Yeah, Dylan, even though yeah. he doesn't have another fatty in his hand, I believe he did have an intuition, the so he's going to be able to find them. At what point did Jeffrey have the crop rotation? Was there a window which he could have used? to make Merit Lage in there. I know there was, Dylan yeah. had the force of will the whole yeah, time. Yeah, either way, I think Dylan had the force of will pretty much the whole time, so I don't think it would have mattered. There's that window where Dylan did, hadn't drawn the ponder yet, and I don't know if Jeffrey had the crop rotation then. Mm -hmm. If he did, he would have had a window, but otherwise, yeah, it it really helps to be able to play force of will in your combo decks. That's one thing that <laughs> Jeffrey doesn't get to do. So is gonna die at the end of the turn, it's gonna trigger, shuffle back into the library, and, uh, Dylan now has a chance. If he draws another land, he could just cast Intuition and find three Emrakuls and then sneak attack it into play and then just win the game right there. Yeah, Jeffrey's at five. Remember, sometimes it does take a while for Sneak and Show to win from this spot. He does have Cantrip, so it seems unlikely that Jeffrey will be able to assemble a Merit Lage before that happens. But maybe he's going to go ahead and cast Shiso Death Storehouse and making Expedition Map. So Shiso is a one of the legendary land cycle from Kamigawa. It's one of the few ways that Jeffrey has to kind of sneak that Merit Lage through. It gives Merit Lage fear for a black mana. It works on legendary permits. Oh, no need to find it. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, he just drew it. Okay. But yeah, she's so... She's the one of those cards that interacts with legendary cards, um, as was kind of the theme in Kamigawa. But in, in one way to punch it through, he also plays a one of Sajiri step in case he needs to get that through. It'll give him the Merit Lage protection from a color. And he can crop rotate into it as a combat trick. So after board, Jeff has really the only card that he can really wants to board in in this matchup is three copies of Ashen Rider. Um, That's a lot of it, though. That's yeah, a lot of it's, Ashen Rider. it's not going to help you against sneak attack, but it can help you against show and tell. So uh, 
I think uh, that's probably really the only card he can come in. And, and, and again, I think it, I kind of like that simply because you have four copies of Pi the Needle. So after board, I actually think um, his situation is actually pretty good. You know, four copies of Pi the Needle to name on Sneak Attack, and then you have three Ash and Rider as show and tell protection um, to go along with the four Thoughtsies that you have. So, you know, after board, he's actually not that bad against uh, Sneak and Show. Yeah, so on the Sneak and Show side, once again, as you said, mostly a dead sideboard there, too. There are two copies of Blood Moon, which figure to be excellent against Turbo Depths. The rest of the cards probably stay in the sideboard, things that don't really do much. Yeah, and you mentioned, you mentioned Blood Moon. I wonder if that means that Jeff has to bring in Abrupt Decays as well. I mean, clearly, Show and Tell's Sneak and Show is one of those decks that you kind of have to be aware of. So he probably knows that there are a lot of Sneak and Show players that play Blood Moon after sideboard. So do I just have to bring in Blood Moon, uh, Abrupt Decay rather, as a way to deal with it? He does have, uh, you know, several basics. He has a uh, Snow Covered Forest and a Snow Covered uh, Swamp. But again, most of his decks are, uh, most of his uh, cards, lands are non-basics. And, you know, the core of his deck is uh, right. a non-basic It's a combo land, so. between a Thespian Station, Dark Depths, which are both four ofs. As is pretty common in these Into the North style decks, he's also playing um, Urborgs. That gives Dark Depths the ability to tap, to tap for black mana. And he has Bayous as well. But other than that, he has a bunch of the utility lands we talked about before. And I yeah, think uh, one, just two basics. The good thing is he has four not of this world in his main deck, which you don't really need in this matchup. He's not afraid of swords to plowshare. Um, there's really not anything that uh, Sneak and Show has that you have to be too afraid of to, to protect your Merit Leash token. So I think not of this world is a, is a card that could easily come out of his main deck. Yeah, so that's a card we saw Todd Anderson play at the SCG, most recent SCG Open in Baltimore. Um, not of this world, yeah, it, it's great at protecting Merit Lage. But yeah, once he makes the 2020, it's pretty much clear sailing from there. Dylan has no way to get it off the board other than annihilating it with Emrakul. Yeah. So I think I could see those four coming out for sure. Um, that'll give him room to bring in three Ash Riders and at least one Abrupt Decay. And then the question is, does he have a way to bring in the other two Abrupt Decays? Maybe the Rite of Consumption in his main deck that he has. Um, that's a card that allows you to win right away. Sometimes you need to do that because you can't just make a 2020 and then get annihilated right away. But again, abrupt decay might just be more important. So um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, Jeff boards out that right of consumption as well. But I so, um, definitely could see not of this world. I want to talk a little bit about strategy on Jeffrey's side. He's running four pithing needles in the main deck. And so say you have a needle in Jeffrey's hand. Do you name, you probably need to throw it down before you see the card that you're trying to needle. Most of, you know, the two cards to needle in Sneak and Show are Gristlebrand and Sneak Attack. And both of those, once they're in play, could already be dealing their damage right away. So the question is, if you're playing Pithing Needle, you know, do you, do you just throw, do you blindly name one of the two? Well, in general, you should probably name Sneak Attack. It really depends on your hand, though. I don't even know if you necessarily just run it out there all the time. Sometimes it's good to put into play off of Sneak uh, show, uh, show and Tell because sometimes, exactly. like, that, you know, Dylan already saw Caracas, so he, he, he might not necessarily always cast Show and Tell just to put a, a Fatty into play. He might just cast it to put a Sneak Attack into play. So that's a situation where if he puts a Sneak Attack in play and you put a Needle into play, that's perfect. Because then the Needle's and, always on the right thing. Exactly. And the other thing is, if you just cast Needle, you give, the, you give him the out to just counter it with Force of Will. Now, that does run the risk, though, that he'll just load his pedal up a up a sneak attack, and then you miss your window. Exactly. So, so I, I think it really, it, it, yeah. it, it kind of depends on your hand. You know, if you have an Ashen Rider in your hand, that's basically your show until protection, so I think it's fine running Needle out there. Um, if you have uh, if you have a way to sort of, if you have like a Vampire Hex Mage in your hand and a Dark Depths in play, that's another, that's kind of show until protection as well, because um, he can't actually just get an Emrakul into play uh, with a show and tell and still not just die to your Merit Lage token. So then I would probably run the Emrakul would have well. to jump block. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the last game, some people at home are wondering whether or not there was a basic mountain in, in Dylan's deck to, to find with the Ghost Quarter. And in fact, he did have one basic mountain to find. Yeah, so if not, Jeffrey could have actually used Ghost Quarter just to take Dylan off red mana. Yeah, so that way he could only activate the sneak attack once, and Caracas would have been basically a fog. We are underway. Jeffrey Blyden, turn one, plays a Dark Depths, Lotus Petal, cracks it, and is going to throw down a Pithing Needle as soon as possible. And, 
And yeah, and he does name Sneak Attack. Right, so it's one of those two targets. You see another needle in his hand. He could get one on Sneak Attack and one on Gristlebrand. If he does, that could actually make things pretty hard for Dylan to... Uh, well, Dylan will lose his ability to combo and win on the same turn once both needles are down. Well, he has um, he has the uh, he boards in the um, through the breach through the breach. So that is still a way for him to kind of get an Emrakul into play and then annihilate the whole board. As we see, there is one in his hand, and it looks like there's a Blood Moon as well. So he could just go turn two Blood Moon here. Well, that will give Jeffrey some mana. <laughs> And this is perfect for Dylan, because Gataxian Probe will give him perfect information and let him know whether or not he has to do it. All right, so we see Lotus Petal, Ashen Rider, Abrupt Decay, Pything Needle, no lands for Blyden. Yeah, and this is so annoying um, when you're playing against Sneak and Show and you board in Ashen Riders and they Gataxian Probe you. Yeah, that's right. Like, not doing anything. It's basically like, okay, well, now they know they just can't cast their show until, which is still kind of good. It's basically, it's still just insurance, but you want to get them, you know? <laughs> you always want to get them, but now, Dylan knows what's up. Dylan knows what Jeffrey's plan is. So um, still pretty good shape, though, because, again, he can't activate Sneak Attack, and he can't actually cast Show and Tell right now. Um, but he does have that Blood Moon and the Through the Breach, so he's still pretty well positioned. All right, so he draws Ancient Tombs. Look like, looks like the plan from Dylan is going to be, well, originally it was going could have been to Show and Tell. Now he's going to go ahead and power out probably first a Blood Moon, followed by a Through the Breach. Yeah, and uh, if Jeffrey draws a land, uh, either a green or black source, he can play that and the Lotus Petal and keep Abrupt Decay mana up. Yeah. So he can float the mana in response to the Blood Moon, let it resolve, and then Abrupt Decay the Blood Moon. But it all depends. If, if, if he doesn't draw a land this turn, though, we could easily see a turn two Blood Moon. That would be pretty devastating for Jeffrey Blyden. Um, thanks to the Lotus Petal, he actually, even if he gets turn two Blood Moon, could start to find some basics. He could eventually cast an Expedition map or a Sylvan Scrying off red mana, find his basics, and continue playing. But he doesn't have any in his hand right now, so the Blood Moon would be pretty damaging. Yeah, he also, have, he also has Elvis Spirit Guide as well. So he still will have sort ways to yeah, ways to play from under a Blood Moon, but it certainly will be difficult for him. So yeah. it looks like we're seeing if Lotus Petal is going to resolve here. He's going to try for Lotus Petal, and he's just trying to get both needles into play. So second Pything Needle. So that, that can name lands, so uh, Flood of Strand will get sacked in response. Likely going to find... Oh, so he's going to find a basic island. So we're not going to see a turn two Blood Moon. So that's good news for Jeffrey. Uh, unless he trusts the Lotus Petal, that is. Well, I think one of the worries with the turn two Blood Moon is I'm, if, if he plays a turn two Blood Moon, I'm not sure that Dylan has a blue source. Yeah, he doesn't have any blue sources. So, so he would actually Blood Moon himself off blue if he made that play. So it'll be a turn three Blood Moon. So Needle is not that naming Grizzlebrand. So he has Needle and Grizzlebrand and Needle and Sneak Attack. Those are the two cards to Needle in this matchup. And he still has that Ashen Rider and Abrupt Decay in his hand, so... Yeah, um, the problem is his, his hand really is not exerting any pressure. Now that we see a Force of Will drawn on Dylan's side, it just seems like it'll be difficult for Jeffrey to assemble this combo. That said, Abrupt Decay is uncounterable. If he can just naturally draw the Thespian Stage Dark Depths, he can still combo that yeah. way. So it looks like we're going to get a Brainstorm, as is, I believe, at the end of turn, at the end of Jeffrey's turn. I yeah. draw another Show and Tell, a Spell Pierce, and an Emrakul. So now with the Emrakul and the Through the Breach, we see another Soul Land in Dylan's hand and a Red Source. It is two turns away from Emrakul. Yeah, so he doesn't, he doesn't actually have to cast... He doesn't have to cast Blood Moon, really. He could just... Play his volcanic kind of island past, and then just cast cast uh, the through the breach next turn. Yeah, now that he like found the Emrakul, I definitely think he's probably going to go for that plan instead. Yeah, it almost seems like Jeffrey's overloaded on hate cards. But then again, when you think about it, Jeffrey's deck really it, it doesn't play too many mana sources because it, it doesn't really need them. It's the advantage of playing this the merit lage combo is that it's, it's not very counterable. Yeah, I think his hand was actually pretty good. He had hate for the sneak attack. He had hate for the show and tell. He just didn't have a way to stop the through the breach. And right. that's, that's why sneak and show is just such a versatile deck, is that you can't stop every angle that attacks you. With. Well, his deck had no permanent mana sources in it and was missing one combo piece. But he, if he draws a second combo piece, he's really in business. But without that, the hand can turn sour pretty quickly. I think yeah. that's what we've seen. So, yep, Dylan here. He's gonna, looks like he's going to play the City of Traders. 
Um, interesting that he didn't want to, uh, maybe he's afraid of Wasteland. Doesn't want to get his volcanic, his only red source wastelanded. That makes perfect sense. I mean, he, he's got to feel pretty confident sitting behind that force of will on what he can do next turn. And he may contemplate force of willing this Lotus Petal, but he does not. He'll just let it resolve, take his next turn, and I think we're going to see yep, two floating off City of Traders. Volcanic Island will make a little sacrifice the city. He's going to go for Emrakul here. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, down to 15. <laughs> you got to be afraid of, what, crop rotation? He's got Spell Pierce back up for it. Yeah, Spell Pierce and Force of Will. He's going to run through the Breach, and that will be Emrakul. That'll be 15 damage. Let's see, Sack of Lotus Petal. It's going to be a crop rotation. And he has to, part of it's the set, he has to sack it. He's going to lose it no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. But Yeah, you should certainly try for it. Unfortunately, yeah, this will be countered. So he, he was going to go for Caracas there. But he's not going to get a chance to. And that will annihilate his board. And uh, Dylan still has that Blood Moon. He's got Blood Moon, Show and Tell. Show and Tell is basically ineffective right now. He does have a Force of Will. So um, Jeffrey's at five. He lost all his permanence, but he, it looks like he does have another Dark Depths in his hand. So he's still not out of it. Like you said, Dark Depths, Despian stage is really all he needs. He drew a Knot of this world, so those have stayed in. I don't believe that's a live card in this matchup. No. Not really relevant. Good thing we got those counters for that Dark Depths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Dylan Jones here was able to annihilate Jeffrey's board and drop him to five, but he doesn't really have anything else right now. He has that Blood Moon, which is going to stop the Dark Depths, but, and, and there's an Emrakul. <laughs> now he can't show and tell him to play. He knows that there's an Ashen Rider waiting for him. Yeah, so Blood Moon's going to come down. This is another thing that Jeffrey has to contend with. We know he has Abrupt Decay in his hand, but he doesn't have a lot of basics left. He does have Elvis Spirit Guide. I think he's got two more Lotus Petals in his deck. And there's one of the basics, so step one. Yeah, and actually, that has given Jeffrey an extra mana source right now. So yeah. uh, his Dark Depths can now tap for red. So Dylan. Dylan draws just another land. So he's got Force of Will, but Jeff Force of Will can't stop Abrupt Decay. Yeah, Jeffrey actually has... You know, the only cards he needs to cast here are Abrupt Decay and make a Thespian stage. So Dylan can't actually interact with any of those. So if Jeffrey can just top deck into the combo or even use an well, Expedition map to help find it, that, that'll that work. He needs to kill the Blood Moon, though. Yeah. Well, he has Abrupt Decay, so he's going to have to get a green source yeah. and the combo. But that, All right. if he can do it, there's Thespian stage, so the combo is on the table. So Elvis Mystic or no? Elvis Spirit Guide. Ex Elvis Spirit Guide, Expedition right, yeah. map. Elvis uh, Spirit the fourth Guide, Expedition Lotus map. Petal. Yeah, there's a lot of outs for Jeffrey here. I think that's it. I think we covered them all. He's got two Lotus Petals, one Basic Forest. He has one Petal left. One Petal left. One Petal left, one Basic Forest, four Expedition Maps. Three, sorry, three Expedition Maps. He has five draws that get him that green source. Oh, baby. Let's see it. Let's, yeah, this would be... Let's see that sweet, sweet Merit Lage. It's, one of the, it's going to be one of those games. It could be one of those games where Emrakul gets to annihilate a board, and then the Seek and Show player does not oh, win. Oh, sweet baby. Let's see end of turn, discard Elvis Spirit Guide, tap my swamp, abrupt the cake. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Expedition Map is if, that if Dylan Jones is heads up here, he would force a will at Expedition Map. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Well, he knows about the abrupt decay. Oh, he knows about the abrupt decay. He, he, he probed abrupt, it. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So then the, the maps, it's really just these four Elvish Spirit Guides. So actually, no, so it's, a, it's somewhere between a nine outer and a five outer and uh there's a crop rotation so uh, no it was no a green card it was draw. not an elvish so there's another land for dylan dylan still doesn't have anything going here no where's players trading oh, draws baby. one oh, of them's gonna was draw. that it was that the elvish spirit guide please uh-oh here we go i now, think we might see show know, because he drew elvish, action rider if it's elvish spirit guide there, there's one weakness here the Dark Depths taps for mana right now, but if he abrupt decays the Blood Moon, he's one mana short of activating the combo because mm -hmm. Dark Depths will stop tapping for mana. So he will need another land to execute this. But it won't matter what land it is, as long as it's not another Dark Depths. Yep. So Dylan drew an Ashen Rider for the turn, and I think he's debating casting Show and Tell to get his Ashen Rider into play. Not sure that's something he wants to do, though, because effectively, what are you really going to do there? You're gonna you're gonna put Jeffrey's show uh, maybe because he has two show and tells. Sure. So yeah, your Ashen Rider comes to play. Jeffrey's Ashen Rider it comes into play. 
You probably right. blow up a Blood Moon, you know. There's the land. There's land number four. So that's a Sajiri step for Blyden. So if he has, if he has the Elvish Spear Guide, he can go for it here. But a second Blood Moon hits her, Dylan. Yeah, so, so this means that definitely, I'm pretty sure Dylan's going to go for the show until next turn. Second Blood Moon cuts off almost all the outs that Jeffrey could have. If he had found the Elvish Spear, he, oh, he had he this drew, He drew sneak attack. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, now things have gotten tougher. Sneak attack drawn for Dylan. And it looks... Good old Emrakul. And that taps for a red, thanks to Blood Moon. <laughs> he has the activation there off the Ancient Tomb. And that should be... I'll go ahead and he'll, he'll put some flair. It'll be Ash and Rioter. And Dylan Jones, two games to zero, will take down Jeffrey Blyden. Uh, Dylan moves to 6-0. and It is one win from the top eight. Jeffrey at 5-1, but still in contention right now with a pretty innovative combo deck, I would say. Yeah, I like his deck a lot. I, uh, you know, wasn't really able to get anything going um, in either game there. And Dylan, in game one, Dylan just had way too many uh, counter spells to stop Jeffrey's uh, uh, action. And then in game two, Jeffrey just didn't kept the... I, I'm